YouTube, it's Joanna Delilah. I am back with a video on face and body painting techniques. Um, this one is quite an advanced one. And hopefully if you've taken my advice, you've already had a little practice from my previous video with the split cakes. If you haven't, I do suggest you have a little look at that video and practice and get familiar with doing the first type of flower and the leaves and things that I showed you in the previous video. And if you are feeling a bit confident with that and ready to go ahead to the next level and create roses like these and these, then stay tuned and I will show you how. It's more difficult than it looks and it usually takes quite a lot of practice and persistence to to master this technique and I wouldn't say that I'm a master at it actually I'm being modest you know what I'm really good at flowers <laughs> I could paint flowers all day every day having said that there are people that are absolutely amazing at it um, and yeah but even if you do them to like a medium intermediate level which I, I probably am why am I saying that I'm amazing at them anyway even if you half do them half decently they look gorgeous so you know even whilst you're learning um you're going to get something beautiful out of this so i'm going to turn my uh camera down hopefully this angle is going to work for you i'm using a body painting practice board but you can do this on your um skin so practice on your own legs or on uh paper with face paints work nicely on paper or on like a laminated sheet or a, or a body paint, face paint practice board like me. So we're gonna do roses. I'm gonna just paint one all in one go first of all, so you can see what we're aiming to achieve. And then I will break it down for you into stages. So just watch this one through and then I'm gonna show you um, again how to do it. So we're gonna do this. First of all, you start off the same way that we did the flowers in the previous video. So you're gonna do just a big open flower. Aim for five petals. Sometimes it ends up with a few more. Um, and I like all the petals to look slightly different um, in size and, and shape anyway. I also quite like to leave a tiny little gap in between most of them. Try not to touch them all together because you lose a bit of definition. Then, really, really important in getting your roses, especially when you're learning, is to clean off your brush. So I've got like a dishcloth just out of sight. Is it? It's a bit mucky, covered in paint. I've got a dishcloth and I've got um, a pot of water which is full of paint water. And I've got a pot of clean water as well. So I've dumped it in the paint water, wiped it off on the... Um, on the cloth and then I'm going to reload and actually um, especially when you're new to it you will find you're better off to even just wipe over your paints every time you need to reload that really is key in getting a good result with these flowers if you let your paints go messy and your water and your brushes go messy you will not get as nice a result as if you keep cleaning them off it can be that you think it slow you down but when you see how beautiful these roses are, it is worth it. And the more you do them, the less faffing about you do because you kind of find your way to do it a bit more cleanly and without the need for too much um, wiping off. So I'm going to do my centre of my rose. And then I'm going to just do some little edgy flowers to fill the space. So there we have my first rose. I'm going to do a little rosebud as well. So again, I'm going to not cut corners. I'm going to clean my brush in between, reloading, making sure I'm getting a nice um, result each time. And I'm going to do a little rosebud. So I'm just doing the middle bit without the edges and then I get a little bit less so I can maybe do a tiny little rosebud there. Just do a little tiny. And then let's go in with some green. So I'm gonna clean off my brush again. Pick up clean. 
dripping water, load up the green side of my paint. Don't know if you can hear that, that's me neighbours out in the garden, excuse the background noise. Working from home, I don't have the luxury of a nice little studio, I'm afraid, in my conservatory. So then I'm just going to add some little bits of green foliage in between, a little swish there, a little bit there. Dun, dun. And then I'd probably fill the space with white dots, maybe. Um, you could add some of the little daisies that I've done in previous videos as well. Just extend that a bit. The other thing that's quite nice to do, you might want to just pick out your highlights with a smaller brush and just a white face paint. This is optional extra, but I quite often do this. Make sure your paint is nice and fluid, so not too thick. And you can just kind of give a little bit of a wibbly outline to them. Sometimes I do this in black as well, and it does look nice. It gives a bit of a sort of sketchy watercolour kind of vibe. So I'll just like go a bit messy around the edges. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a little arty touch that will give you some little extra little bit of pizzazz. Who doesn't want an extra little bit of pizzazz, hey? All right, and then you could add some little white dots on any other little bits just to give a nice little flare. Okay, so I'm going to take that off and do that again, but I'm going to separate it out. So I'll just slow down what I did and show you again um, the process. Let me let you have another look at that first in case the angle wasn't very good. Okay. So let's clean that off. I swear that's two doors down, I can't. Can you even hear them? I don't know if you can. <laughs> Just when you're filming a YouTube video, I've got Foghorn Leghorn in the background in his back garden. <laughs> right, okay, let's go again. So I'm gonna clean off my brush. You might wanna, um, you could perhaps just pause the video as I do it step by step. Um, uh, maybe screenshot the little steps. It's quite useful to see it broken down into stages. Just gonna wipe off that paint just to freshen up my stripes again and reload. Oh, that brush is a bit too wet. Um, I think I'm all right. As long as I keep mixing it up and down and don't mess with my structure of my stripes too much. I think I can just about get away with it. You have to be careful not to flood the paint and lose your stripes. You can see I've got that stripey effect on the brush. So what we are looking to achieve is we are going to do our outside first. So light, I always, especially with roses, I always like the light end to be the outside of the rose all right so this is just the same as i showed you in that previous video so we're going to do five petals notice how i flipped the brush to do that side because i can't actually get my hand around that kind of angle of a circle so but remember when you flip your brush always check have i got the light at the outside of the flower then to do the middle bit of the flower what you're going to do is um, like a lowercase letter N. So with the light at the, at the top, at the outside, you're going to go slowly up the hill, along the arch and down the hill. So it's like a little hill or, a, or an N. And then next to that, I'm going to do the next step, which I would be doing this on top. So then you do the basically that in reverse. So you go down the hill, along the bottom, and up the hill. I realise this is probably upside down too, so that's, sorry, even more confusing. And then for your edge petals, hold the brush straight up, press it down onto the skin, 
give a little twist just with the white side. Keep the dark side where it is. Twist out, pull down. As you pull down, lift up the dark side so you're leading with the light. And it's like a little comma and you're going to do that the other side. So push down, twist and round. And that I think is the hardest bit to, to gauge. You might want to screenshot that. That's got all the little layers that you would then put all of those together, which I'll just do now if I pop them in. So I'm going to do this bit now in the middle of my rows. But before I do that, really important to clean off the brush. And reload with clean water. And again, if your paints are getting murky, you might even need to wipe off the paint. Really is the trick to success is just keeping your stripes in order. Okay, then with the light at the top, we're going to start, if you look at your sort of hole in the middle of your roses, keep your brush upright, start your heel about probably two thirds of the way down. So you're going to leave a little gap, all right? So then you're going to go up a little bit of a zigzag wriggle along the hill, down the hill. All right, and then to do the bottom of the hill, or the, the, it's like a lowercase n and a lowercase u. Start at the same place, really important, so it joins up. All right, so starting at the same place and then gonna go down. You don't wanna bring the bottom too far down. You wanna keep it contained within these petals. All right, and then we're gonna do our little sideways bits, which are like a comma. So brush straight on, twist with the light side, pull down. Lift up the dark so you're leading with the light. So you get that nice little swish there. Same the other side. Down and round. You can add a couple of those underneath if you wanted to. All right, so that is how to do your rows. And then, as I said before, when I showed you, I quite like to outline it. I'll just show you what it looks like when you outline it in black. Um, it sounds like, oh, why would you want to do that? But I quite like it because I think it looks a little bit like a watercolour painting. You know where they do that pen and ink? Um, you know, they, they outline it with a black line. I quite like it. Even this is an optional extra. But if you do a little sketchy, kind of messy, little black outline, it just looks, I like it anyway. Or you could do this in the white, as I showed you before. Don't join it all the way up. It's just a little, a little arty little touch. And then if you had your leaves in there as well, obviously it would all make a bit more sense. But so you'd have your decoration and your dots and whatnot. So there is your one stroke rose. Okay, um, hope you got something out of that. Have a little practice. Don't have a tantrum and throw it all in the bin if you can't do it on the first go. It's not as easy as it looks, um, but it's well worth, my hand's covered in paint. It is well worth playing with as well and having a little practice because they are joyful to do and they always look so impressive. Um, and clients absolutely love them. So it's my kind of, my thing. I always just put, wherever I can put a flower, I'll put a flower when I'm doing body painting or face painting. You could sprinkle a little bit of glitter over and be even better. Um, so thank you for watching. Take care and I will hope to see you all soon.